today we continue with our class uh, Women's Guide to Practical Halakha and we start with Sefer uh, Shmiras <clears throat> Halashon and today's topic is beyond, second, beyond comprehension it says let us address the con contention that it is virtually impossible in, uh, to faithfully absorb the uh, laws of Shmiras Halashon for more than a day or two, right? So people say, how can I not to speak uh, and Hara? How is it possible, right? Maybe a day, okay, maybe two, but no more. Even if this were correct, it is a reason enough, is it a reason enough to ignore the mitzvah? Uh, imagine a person who walks along the seashore, who would see uh, that the sea wash uh, ashore uh, press precious gems. Would such a person, even if he were wealthy, refrain from picking up any, uh, any gems because he knows that he will, it will be impossible to gather them all? So I think uh, Hafez Chaim gives us an amazing example, right? So just because you cannot uh, uh, do everything, so do as much as you can, right? At least start, at least uh, try. Like uh, this example of this uh, shore, seashore and uh, precious gem, of course you have only so much room into in, in your pockets and uh, that's it. Let, let, let's say you don't have any bags. Okay, so you you're going to take as much as you can, right? Just just because you don't have any bags with you does not mean that, that you're going to stop. It is exactly the same regarding Shmiras uh, Lashon. It is well known that the Vilna Gaon in his famous letter uh, quotes the Madrash, uh, which says that for each moment. Uh, in which person refrains from speaking the forbidden, he merits a hidden light that no en uh, angel can fathom. So that's a major promise and uh, he, he should not be taken lightly with, uh, by us, right? Vilna Gom said, just for you keeping quiet, you get a reward. So of course it's very different in this world, in our world, so if you don't uh, commit a crime, whatever crime is, uh, nobody's going to give you a reward. You're not going to get punished, but uh, not so in the Hashem world, right? He said, you you don't speak Loshon Hara, you get in, uh, you, you get in reward. Not that Mejus does not speak of refraining for forbidden speech for a month, a week, or even an hour, but only for a moment. So even for each moment, you get this reward, which is an uh, amazing uh, investment, right? To keep quiet. Scripture states, if you will uh, seek, uh, seek it like a silver, or hunt it like a hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of Hashem, and knowledge of God you will find. It says in Mishlei 2, um, chapter 2, in uh, verses 4 and 5. Okay. So if you want it, and it's with everything in life, if you truly, truly, truly want something, for sure you can read, right? achieve it. Just invest more energy, right? Um, and you're going to get it. One must strive to attain spiritual goals in the way that he would seek the greatest valuables uh, that this world has to offer. So every, all of us uh, like uh, have uh, some achievements, right? In uh, on whatever level. So just uh, if we like uh, treat this physical achievement same as uh, spiritual, we would. Uh, for sure we can um, we can do it this is the intent of the statement do not disagree uh, do not distance yourself from the quality that uh, that is without limit right so some some people they, they all check how how many pages is left till the end of the book how how much we cover okay we cover how sometimes i check but it's not not because of that i see if we can finish and uh, like uh, the, the chapter Right, but some people account how many pages till the end of the book, right? Just just because something is without limit does not mean that, that we're not going to start and uh, do as much as we can. A wooden forbidden speech brings an infinite merit. Uh, if we will only um, pursue this quality and do not uh, and not uh, and not tell ourselves that it is out of our reach then um, we will have achieved that which no angel can fathom right this uh, spiritual light okay we stop here so so be before going to our 
regular book. We're going to start with another book a little. Uh, and the question was, uh, the question was asked, uh, if women are allowed to the, to use a makeup on Shabbos. So, which is very interesting. So uh, I, I took a wrong, wrong book, unfortunately. I meant to take something else. But here is, is also, I mean, I, I just saw there is a topic, a makeup on Shabbos. So we're going to cover that and uh, we can do some uh, some other things as well. Because uh, our, our, um, our topic is uh, halachas for women and uh, our topic is uh, Shabbos. So let's start from this book. And uh, the name of the book is Halachically Speaking. It's a very famous rabbi. Uh, Rabbi Moshe David Lebovitz. So he's uh, he actually lives in uh, my town, or I live in his town. And uh, and uh, he's uh, he's head of um, rabbinical head of Kuf K. There's a kosher kosher agency. So I, uh, when uh, when I have kosher uh, question, not like uh, in general, I I go to him. Okay, so Baruch Hashem. Um, chapter 16 okay so uh, chapter 16 and topic is coloring on Shabbos so what is, what is the problem with, uh, with the makeup on Shabbos right it's coloring so Baya coloring is one of 39 milachas which is forbidden to perform on Shabbos right? the milach of Tzaveya was used uh, in the Mishkan coloring ramps uh, heights uh, for uh, Yiriyos Okay, we're going to explain. Rambam said that uh, Tzaveh is only forbidden, Mina Torah, if it's uh, leave the last in effect. Uh, if the fact is only temporary, then it's uh, only forbidden, Midrabanan. Okay, so first we go with when, when we learn about Melachas and uh, what, what is forbidden, so we always, all, 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 uh, always have to go to the roots. Right, and roots are all of these uh, melachas were forbidden. Melacha is forbidden work in um, in uh, Mishkan, in the tabernacle in a, uh, in a desert. So they were making, uh, they were coloring the skins of the rams. Right. Uh, so when uh, when when you uh, coloring the, the skin, it, it it means permanent. That that's so you you want to stay uh, stay this uh, this. Uh, color right so solid color so all, all of the skins would be on the same color otherwise if, if you skin the animals so all animals have different colors naturally right that, that that's not what you want you want one universal color and uh, you want this color to stay so if it's if it uh, last it has a lasting effect so it's biblical if it's not lasting effect that's it's uh, rabbinical so and uh, draw the parallel you we can already see that uh, coloring uh, makeup on Shabbos would be rabbinically forbidden. One second. Continue. There is a discussion about scheme how much time uh, consider are permanent. The Malachaut Tzaveya only applies to items which are typically colored. Right, so that's, uh, that's another another thing so something that are uh, typically colored and of course we're going to say it's only for constructive purpose if it's for destructive purpose so it's not uh, it's not uh, that does not come onto this prohibition coloring means uh, enhancing the appearance of something by adding color so we see makeup is already in this category uh, so i'm um, I'm, I'm going to read some some of the notes. So example of um, of this would be coloring in a coloring book, right? So that's uh, that for sure. Um, regarding polishing shoes uh, that are already polished, see Mishnah Brura. So that's that's a different a different story because uh, um, even though the the shoes are polished, right? So you you're going to smooth out. And, and uh, add color like it's going to shine. Also a problem. Continue. Placing, placing coloring object onto the table is not surveyor because the object will not change. Okay, so 
continue. So now we're going to make up on Shabbos. Uh, it is Isur de Rabbanan. So right away, as we as we saw from the condition, we we could figure right that it's from uh, uh, rabbis to color skin on Shabbos in a manner that color will remain on the skin for a while. Okay, so we we need to see what is the while is. Okay, therefore. Um, a woman may not apply makeup to her face on Shabbos because doing so colors her skin. Says Rambam, Shulchan Aruch, Magid Abraham, Levush, all of this great. So he he gives all all of the sources on the bottom. So clear cut: a woman may not apply uh, makeup to her skin on Shabbos. So continue reading. This applies to any part of your face. That it typically uh, applies, uh, that she typically applies makeup to, including her eyelids, etc. So basically, anyway, so there, there is no problem. Uh, uh, there, there is no problem if she would apply the makeup on. Uh, um, on Friday before the Shabbos starts. Where we're talking about applying makeup on the Shabbos itself. Even the makeup was applied, okay, here we go. Even the makeup uh, was applied before Shabbos, she may not add uh, to it on, on Shabbos. So like touch up. I, I don't know what, what women call it, but in, uh, in, right? So we will talk, call it touch up, to, to fresh up a little, right? So even though it, it's like a, a person could, could say, no, no it's, it was already colored, so what, what I'm adding, yeah, you're adding more color. That's uh, like improvement. One may apply last, um, last, long-lasting makeup before Shabbos, even though it will still be visible on Shabbos, on Shabbos morning. There is no concern for Mari sign. So let's try to understand. So there is a, what they call a permanent makeup. I'm not sure when the, they came up with it, maybe not, not, not so long ago, maybe five, ten years ago. Maybe, I'm not, uh, that, that's what I think. So not not so long ago. And at last, it's, uh, I mean, the, they they call it permanent makeup, uh, or maybe some by uh, some other terms, but uh, uh, it lasts, I think that they, uh, they say like 24 to 36 hours, which is very long time. Uh, if it's uh, healthy for for a woman, I'm not sure. Uh, I've never looked into it, but uh, but that, that's the thing. So even though, so if she put this uh, permanent, like uh, minute, like strong, strong coloring, right, uh, before Shabbos on on, on Friday and uh, Shabbos morning, let's say she goes to to synagogue where people come to her house and uh, and she has a makeup. So since everybody knows. That's uh, that's what it is, right? That uh, she would use this uh, this special makeup, so nobody would uh, um, <clears throat> suspect that she did it on Shabbos. So this uh, this concept is um, is called Maris Ayn. So the Maris Ayn, the uh, uh, the way it looks uh, from from uh, from uh, from the outside, like pe people who would not know, they say, yeah. Uh, yeah, you, you can apply this uh, makeup on Shabbos. How do you know? It's not, we just told you it's not a lot. No, I saw this rabbit uh, with the makeup. You understand? So sometimes you have to explain people, uh, to, to people. Uh, but many, many people do not know what, what to ask. Right? So if, 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 if you see that you are doing something permissible on Shabbos and not on Shabbos, and, and you know for sure it is permissible, and you have a special circumstances why it is permissible for you, or it's permissible in gen in general, and you see somebody is looking at you with a doubt, so you you have to come up and explain to person, right? Otherwise, they they, they would learn something wrong from your behavior. A woman may not apply nail polish uh, to her nails on Shabbos, uh, if um, as this would constitute coloring on Shabbos. Right, uh, yeah, the din din is uh, halacha, right? Judgment din is judgment, but in this case halacha uh, applies even to the um, nail polish that is clear. So it does not matter what kind of nail polish. So it's all of the great rabbis. Yeah, um, you cannot do it on Shabbos. So even, even though I mean, they, they say clear, yeah, it is clear, but in in a, in a sense it changes the color anyway, even if it's clear. 
Similar lipstick or lip gloss may not be applied on Shabbos because of color. Lip and lipstick is forbidden due to the issue of uh, uh, smoothing. So smoothing is uh, is uh, is another uh, is another prohibition on Shabbos. Is what uh, in 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 the Mishkan when when they were the, like, uh, working on on a skin, they would remove all of the hairs from from uh, from the height and then smooth it with uh, with, with all of the fats and stuff like that. So. Of course, this uh, smoothing with a uh, uh, with a lipstick would be would be under under two categories under two prohibitions. One is coloring and one is smoothing. And uh, this smoothing same is um, same uh, uh, the same reason is why uh, uh, women or men as well cannot apply a cream like a thick cream on on Shabbos. So if it's like liquidy cream, like uh, I don't know what would be the example of liquidy cream. I'm not sure. Like maybe like 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 the the one that is freely flowing, like like a baby oil. Let's say let's say it consists of baby oil, maybe a little uh, thicker. So there is no problem. But if it's a real cream, like uh, would not be allowed to, to apply because of this prohibition. Sample skin say the powder which does not cling to the face may be applied on Shabbos. Uh, uh, for example, talcum powder. So it's from long time ago. So, so it's from Arab uh, Rabbi Moshe finds in the Tzal. Um, so he's he's explaining who says that certain conditions have to be met first. Uh, and very interesting. So and, uh, somebody else says uh, who, um, who who say blush is also forbidden. So I'm, I'm not sure why why would say why would somebody think it's uh, uh, the blush is uh, allowed, but uh, okay, doesn't matter. But but uh, this uh, this uh, talcum powder, I mean, uh, the, the way I see it, if if she, if she has like that darker color color clothing, when it starts like falling out, like it's it would not would not look uh, very presentable. To say mild, mildly. Okay, so others say so. Some say uh, it is uh, uh, allowed, as uh, Moshe finds it. I don't remember. Like uh, I remember learning, but it was uh, like several conditions. So I, at, at the time of this uh, piece, when we finished, I said it's uh, like almost mission impossible. So who, who would want to do that? But sometimes that's uh, probably. I, I think, and under certain circumstances. When we want to do it anyway, I mean because it's allowed. When all of the conditions are fulfilled, often people do not realize that the other uh, ingredients may be put into the talcum powder, which would be forbidden to use on Shabbos. Okay, so I'm, I'm not sure what, what ingredients, but uh, so it's uh, it's in in all good olden days, every, everything was pure. When when it says uh, uh, I don't know. When it says uh, talcum powder, that, that that's what it is. It's like a chalk. That's it, right? Maybe I don't know what else would they add. Maybe one or two ingredients. But today, in anything like uh, pr processed food or something, like uh, there are ha maybe a hundred ingredients. If you buy like frozen uh, food, a lot. Uh, <clears throat> there are some scheme who maintain that certain powders. And makeup and permitted to be worn on Shabbos because they do not stick to the uh, uh, stick to or color the skin. Okay, so the commentary says uh, before um, Yach Yachave Das in Yabia Omer. So it's Rav Vavadi in Yelkut Yosef. So if somebody interested in it's Yel. Yabia Omera 6.37, Yelkut Yosef 3.20 and the Halacha 3. Okay. However, this hatter should not be relied upon so that he's... I'm, I'm not sure what, what is it, but it's probably main, many conditions must be met. Because experience has shown that the difference between the makeup, which is permitted and forbidden, is so slight that it is almost impossible to differentiate between them. Um, so basically, and uh, so I, I was asked this question, and um, I'm sure many other people were asked this question. So how come they uh, sell in Judaica? 
this and said it's Shabbos maker. I mean, the, the, the Judaica, Judaica store is a, it's a commercial place. They're going to sell you whatever, whatever you want to sell. I mean, uh, they, they would say, yeah, but, but Rabbi Spendik, he said it's allowed, but who is Rabbi Spendik? I mean, I don't know, but he's a rabbi. It's has, and he said it's allowed. So, I mean, uh, just because uh, Judaica store sells it or internet sells it, and uh, they, they put somebody's a big rabbi name, does not mean that it's true, right? One is, so continue, one is permitted to pinch the cheeks of a child, even if doing so will, uh, will cause the cheek to, to, be, to turn red, since one uh, does not intend to call the child's face. So sometimes like uh, these people like, like to, to pinch the, the cheek, or poor, poor child, and uh, the, the cheek become red, but it's, uh, it's only blood, right, that, that comes, uh, comes forward. It's not, uh, it's not like it's a permanent change. However, a woman may not pinch her cheeks, since uh, her intention would be to call her. That's, uh, that's an amazing line, right? So, especially in olden days before, before the makeup, right? In, uh, I don't know, in, in, uh, with, with a poor people, that, that's what uh, women would do. Like, uh, she, she's about to, to, to meet her groom, right? They, 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 they were so poor, they did not have a makeup. So that's what they do. They would pinch uh, their, their cheeks, right? But since, for doing so it's for coloring so of course it's rabbinical it's understandable it's not going to stay you you're right is in all of the points that you say but uh, our rabbi said don't do it uh, but this is uh, next point is very very important so it says all of them important but uh, this is very like uh, practical for women who wants to wear makeup from from Shabbos women may remove makeup from the her face on Shabbos Generally, a disposable tissue must be used for the purposes as well uh, as will be discussed later. Uh, <clears throat> so we're going to discuss later. So, and uh, some uh, some of the cleanser, like a um, uh, makeup remover, and also like a creamy cleaving substance. So we, we must make sure that uh, it's like it's freely flowing. Otherwise, it like so it would not be considered as a cream okay so technically so let's let's conclude a little so she can um, so she can put a uh, makeup on friday before shabbos there is no problem this as we said this even permanent uh, whatever they call permanent makeup it's much stronger than the regular one so uh, let's say she has a lunch in her house uh, in the morning no problem after lunch she, she can remove it of course, it's not going to be fresh. I, I mean, I, I think it's fresh. I, I'm not. I'm, that's. Not, I'm not looking at the woman, but uh, some somebody told me somebody consulted with me before. So uh, the, this lady said that uh, it's. It, it, so, so she she was very satisfied. Basically. Okay, she's satisfied. And I'm very happy. Okay, so continue. Um, any any questions on what we said so far? But makeup. Okay. <clears throat> Continue. That's uh, next one is very interesting. <laughs> foods that color lips. It is permitted to, both for men and women to eat foods that uh, might color the lips, uh, and, uh, lips, etc. On, on Shabbos, right? Since it is not a derech of coloring lips. Um, by, uh, by by eating foods, some of skim are hesitant to allow women to, uh, who normally wear lipstick to eat foods which color uh, which color the lips, since your intention might be to color her lips. I'm not sure what would be, um, maybe beets, like, I don't know what, what other foods would color the lips, I'm not sure, like, uh, like strong red. Uh, it would seem that uh, it would seem that the same applies to eating the ice, red ice. Okay, so ices. So uh, the, these ices have um, most of the time this ar artificial color. Yeah, so it's going to stay exactly. The food that changes color in in the mouth um, may be eaten on Shabbos. So we, because it's inside. So so we. We only care about like externally. What is internal is, uh, is is not a problem. Since one um, does not intend to color, it is considered um, uh, normal eating processes. 
Okay, so I'm not sure if we should go. I think we can stop here. It's, uh, so the, the question was only about the, the makeup, so we answered the question about the makeup. Right, so regular makeup we don't apply on Shabbos. Even this talcum somebody said, but uh, it's not such an easy thing. We have to see all of the conditions that must be met. Um, but you can apply this, uh, whatever they call permanent makeup, that would stay. I think that the way I remember that uh, when I was asked, I looked into it. I think it says that 24 to 26 hours. Is it healthy stuff? Uh, as I said, I don't, I don't think so. But at least it's uh, if, if needed, that uh, would be a solution. Okay, so we stop here. So we go back to our book. Any any questions on what we said before we continue? Okay, so we continue with uh, with laws of Shabbos, and uh, the, our big topic that we didn't finish is Hadlakas uh, Neiras. So we said uh, how many um, uh, all all the laws about the, the candles. Of course, how, how many candles? The reason for the candles and uh, uh, lights and electricity, and we say uh, how how you 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 combine two of them and you 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 make a blessing, of course, not on electric light as well as the candles. So um, we're discussing olive oil, also very nicely uh, lit and uh, like uh, it's burning beautifully. Uh, we, we, last thing that we discussed: number of the candles. Okay, so we, we continue with new material, um, and uh, the topic is if one forgets to light. If one forgets to light Shabbos candle, she must light one additional candle for every subsequent Shabbos from then on. This is to stress upon her that the Hadlak Asneris is very important mitzvah, and she must therefore be very vigilant in the future. Others explain the additional candle to, uh, to meant to atone for if you uh, haven't forgotten to light. So, okay, so let's try to understand. So before we continue, so if a woman forgets uh, to light the candles, of course, uh, if, if it was her fault, so uh, like if it was beyond her control, for example, the baby was sick, I don't know, she was, uh, got stuck in traffic, I don't know, some, some, like, some, something like uh, out of health control. So when, uh, when you're going home on, uh, on Fridays, right, and you, especially in, in the summer where, where, where people are going like, uh, like uh, out of town on, on Friday for, for the weekend, so you have to allow yourself extra time. How much extra time? Maybe 50% of the extra time. So if it's uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe more than 50, more, maybe double. So it usually takes you one hour to get home, plus minus. So you, you give yourself two hours just in case. You never know, maybe maybe two and a half hours. That, that would be proper. So, but if she gave her, herself only one usual hour, as she would do on Monday, so of course it's her fault, right? So, so if a woman forgets to light a candle, on one Shabbos, she has to add one candle. So, for example, she was uh, lighting uh, lighting two candles, right? Uh, and uh, from then on, she would until the rest of her life, she would add one extra candle, right? That's uh, that's uh, the way to to remember not to do it again. So every every time that she would uh, light uh, this uh, third candle, she would remember that's that's because I messed up that line. Right, so others explain it's uh, like, a, uh, what does they call it, like atonement for him. So with men it's a little easier, but uh, let's see. Uh, however, if she did not light because of circumstances that were out of her control, and was completely not her fault, there is no need to add additional candle. One must ask halakhic authority uh, if the particular situation falls into this category. And I... I remember somebody came to me and then she, she knew the halacha and she knew the, the answer to, to her question. And she, uh, this lady was like pushing, like uh, that uh, she wanted me, me, me to say that it was not her fault, even though it was her fault uh, 100%. As uh, 
as we said the, the example was uh, if, if usually it takes you like uh, one hour to get home so give yourself one and a half hour two hours at least like minimum like minimum of the minute, especially in the summer months so but if she if she if she like ignores the uh, the, the advice it uh, gives herself like 55 minutes for sure she, she's going to get late so <laughs> that's very interesting so that that's uh that's why they, they say so you many many times uh, pe people don't don't say problem in in themselves that that's uh, the, that's why they say ask Kalaki authority will tell you like uh hear your case out and tell you what to do continue um so since the this book is is only for uh, for women uh i think if i remember correctly men would not need to to add another candle if he if he forgets okay but women do okay continue times for uh, candle lighting the shabbos candles must be lit before sunset uh, if for whatever reason a woman did not light the candles she uh, and she realizes that the sunset has already passed she uh, should not light that's it uh, some suggest that uh, if it is still time frame of Ben Hashem Ashos, twilight she may ask a non-jew to light uh, for her no bracha is recited when this is done okay let, let's stop here and understand so in um, uh in our, in our calendars when when it says candle lighting time it, it's different from a sunset right so questionable time when it's uh whether it's, it's, it's still day or already night starts from sunset until the nightfall right it's called ben hashemashos twilight so maybe it's day according to some uh, poskim from uh, from a talmud they say it is a uh, it is still day look it's outside uh, it's uh, still uh, still light still uh, you can see is uh, like uh, there is still sun maybe partially may started going down but still it's very light outside but others say so no once it started the uh, sun started going down it's already next day it's already night so since it is maybe so we of course and since it m might be uh, be, uh it's uh, if 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 if, uh, um, if it's already night and we were lighting uh, candles on on Shabbos itself, it's a biblical violation. It would be death penalty uh, when when it's uh, there is a basin. So of course we we refrain, right? But since it is questionable, so you, it's it's one of the things uh, exceptional things when you can ask a non-Jew whether a man or a woman doesn't matter and uh, they can light it for you and you you can uh, ask them in a in a straightforward way you you, you don't have to like uh, uh, do any deviation so you, you you can ask them to light the candles for you of course since it is too late so you cannot say any blessings so blessings and actions uh, of course we, we say blessing that we, we take action but in this case since it is questionable so our sages gave us leniency but only leniency on the action but no no leniency on the, on the, on the blessing since it might be already shamas and you are not allowed to create a fire in shamas continue okay okay so one, one second before before I... Uh, so our in our calendars, so it it, it depends where uh, where you live in in the world, uh, how close you are to equator. So you look at the 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 time uh, they they give for candle lighting is different. So in the region where 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 I live, for example, it's 18 minutes before the sunset. But we of course we can check if somebody have any doubts. I mean, uh, we, we should not have any doubts. Uh, we have to check in our calendar. We have uh, this website that I use. I, I personally like this uh, application. It's free and you, you can use on website. It has different languages, actually. So it, uh, it's myzmanim.com. Myzmanim.com. Right? And um, they, they give you two times. One time is a candle lighting. So let's say in my region, right, where I live, it's 18 minutes before the sunset. So technically, technically, uh, if uh, if if she did not light, uh, let's say candle lighting was uh, f 
I think 434 by me. I, I think uh, this, uh, this this Friday, 434, right? So if she did not light at 434, so she has a uh, if needed, if needed. Of course, we try not to do it, but if uh, like under like extra, extraneous like circumstances, so you have this 18 minutes uh, before the sunset, so you can still light the the candles, and you you can do it yourself. You you don't, you don't have to ask anybody. Okay, but. Uh, but check your calendar. So check two times. One time is a candle lighting, and the second time is a sunset. So in case of the need, of course, it's like only in uh, like uh, unusual situations, right? An, an unpredictable situation. So you can go by by the uh, up up to sunset to light the candles. Continue. In earlier time, the light in uh, the the earliest time. To light, um, to light is after Plaga Mincha, one and a quarter of seasonal hours before the sunset. Okay, so let's uh, let's try try to understand. Um, if if you check this calendar, there is a, such a thing is uh, is a Plaga Mincha. So it's one hour and fifteen minutes, seasonal minutes uh, before the um, seasonal hours also, right? Be, before the sunset. So f for example, like. Uh, if uh, if uh, as I say, I mean it was like a four four thirty, so I'm, I'm not sure what were seasonal hours now. Like uh, maybe three thirty, three three twenty seven. I don't know I would be able to to light the candles. It would be the earliest. Maybe maybe less uh, because it's eighteen minutes. Okay, let's say three thirty, three thirty. 335 so I would be able to, to, to light the candles the earliest so if uh, if person wants to accept Shabbos earlier there is no problem but that's that's the earliest so in uh, in the in our calendars one more time we have a sunset so I'm going uh, from top to bottom you have sunset you have uh, uh, you have um, uh, uh, time for lighting candles and we go down we have a plug Haminha uh, and it's one hour and quarter before the sunset, right? But it changes day day by day. So this this hours are uh, not exactly like uh, sixty minutes hours. Okay, all right. So that's the earliest. Continue. Any questions on what we said before we continue? It's very important topics. Go ahead. Yes, Rob. Yes, go ahead. Yes, 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 yes. Some, someone in the family. So let's say, let, let's say he, he got home early on uh, on Friday, or he, he has uh, like a half day work, and then she she works. She went shopping. Let's say last minute shopping. So of course, uh, and she she got stuck in the traffic, but she's going to get on time. So it's it's a must for a husband to light the candles, and it's uh, for it's it's not going to be a punishment for her. Like a, not a punishment, a penalty for help for the next time. So she would not uh, would would not need to light extra candles. Why? Because uh, because husband in in wife in, in wife it's like uh, it's uh, uh, it's like one one body. And said so if she did it, uh, he's included. If, if he did it, she's included. So she's a primary person to light. But uh, if she got stuck in the traffic, absolutely, that's his responsibility. Yes. Go ahead. Any other questions? Okay. Okay. And, also, and and also um, <clears throat> when she lights the candles, mm -hmm. does the, that already means shovels is already took is gonna take place already? It's already gonna start for everybody, mm -hmm. or just for her? Only, only for her. Only for her. Okay. So if I if I still have stuff I need to do to like uh, prep food or. Or Absolutely. Do yes. a little bit of uh, last minute cleaning. Or exactly. Whatever. No. Exactly. Exactly. Get, exactly. Get the kids ready. Okay. So I, I give you I give you a better example even than, than that, right? So uh, she 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 already lit the candles, but uh, husband one want, wants to drive to 
to the shul. So in, uh, in, in places where Aleph it's not common, but uh, <laughs> because uh, there are too, too many shuls, but some, some people who, who live like uh, far away, like in uh, different places, so they, they, like, they, they like to drive there, right, to, to the place, leave the car, and then uh, and then uh, on uh, Shabbos, uh, like uh, Motsa Shabbos, they take the car and uh, drive home. There is no problem. So she already lit the candles, but he has still time, so he can drive to the shul. Yeah, no problem. So it and it's proper. It's Rebbe uh, 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 Kanievsky, right? Uh, she she wife of uh, Rav Chaim Kanievsky. That's all. So she she used to when people. Uh, people, women from all over the world came to her for a blessing, for advice, for a marriage counseling, for all of the beautiful advice that she gave. And she was an amazing woman. And uh, one, one of the, the most uh, like famous advices that she would give, if you want a blessing in your house, she would say, light a uh, Shabbos candle 10 minutes earlier. So it says uh, 430, let's do, we'll do 420. So it's like, to show that even though, like, if you light it for Tori, you you good according to any halal. You there is no problem with you. But when you light even earlier, like ten minutes, like uh, one minute, it's okay. You you finish a little early. You 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 good this uh, this time. But when ten minutes early, so you show you 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 feel you show the, uh, the Hashem that that that's you you want His Shabbos. You understand? That's uh, and, and it's a big blessing. That's what we do in our house. Unless something like uh, <laughs> uh, like uh, out of ordinary happens, so we try to light minimum ten minutes early. Okay, but uh, but uh, and plus uh, 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 the question is uh, the better question is if women are obligated to accept Shabbos when uh, the men does, so not not necessarily. So she can say, "I'm going to accept Shabbos when I'm going to light candles." So and it's um, uh, very very practical on uh, in a, in a summer right say so in a summer when when uh, men usually usually not 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 all not in all uh, shows but usually in many places they accept Shabbos earlier like uh, let's say the candle lighting would be I'm 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 just saying maybe in July or something right it would be I don't know eight thirty p.m. But let's say it depends where you're in the, in the globe, of course. Let's say 8.30 p.m. So, but but we accept Shabbos like, uh, not 8, or maybe 8, 8.15, but we accept Shabbos at 7. Not, not 7, 7 we start praying, this and that. So, but, so in 7.15 we already accepted Shabbos, let's say, right? We, we already accepted Shabbos, but she she has time uh, at till 8.15. So it happened a few times, like in, in even in this year. Um, so I would come home from the shul and my wife just lit the candle like two, two minutes ago. You understand? Even though I already we accepted everything, we, we, we pray, we dance, we sing, we came home and uh, she just accepted. There is no problem. Okay. Any other questions before I continue? Okay. All right, no problem. So let's continue then. So the earliest uh, time that we can accept Shabbos is the Plag Hamincha. Okay, continue. The common, uh, the, the, the most commonly observed time for lighting candles is 18 uh, minutes before the sunset. But, uh, okay, that's what he said, but uh, uh, we have to check. Not everywhere, the, the, the depends where you're on the globe. Okay, continue. In Jerusalem, the custom is to light the candles 40 minutes before the sunset. That's uh, That's the... The famous halacha, right? So, in Yerushalayim, they uh, they accepted the stringency upon themselves. And if you've been in Yerushalayim on Friday night, uh, they like since it's it's very close to equator, like it's so fast, it's unbelievable. the uh, The night comes very fast, so that's why in uh, the holiest city, you want to do uh, all of the preparation earlier. There is a mitzvah to accept Sabbath early upon oneself. This is referred to the Mosif Michol al Hakodesh, adding from mundane onto the uh, on, um, onto what is holy. In practical term, uh, this means uh, to begin Shabbos before the sunset. Okay, so let's uh, try to explain this concept because it's very very important. So, 
I have to understand the power of the speech. So in the, in the beginning of the of the class, we said uh, we were talking about this shmiras uh, halashon, uh, how we have to protect our speech, and here is uh, is showing why why because the power of the speech, with our power of the speech, we we can declare Friday regular Friday mundane, right? And we make this part of the like ten minutes, five minutes, half an hour, one hour, uh, and fifteen minutes into holy. So why how with, with our uh, declarations and uh, that's what they say it's very proper and uh, that's what I said uh, at least 10 minutes uh, I mean if, if you can if you can more it's even better so add from uh, mundane to the holy and same uh, when the, the, the Shabbos is over don't don't rush like j just because Shabbos is over don't rush to, to, to do Havdalah right, right away give it a few minutes like uh, right so just uh, at least show that uh, that you care Okay, continue. There is a dispute among the poskim. Okay, the poskim whether a woman are obligated to obligated in this mitzvah. A woman who lights the candles eighteen minutes before the sunset certainly fulfilled this uh, mitzvah. So as as we said, <laughs> uh, be, because she lights eighteen minutes, but uh, but since um, we have to explain. Um, she must uh, light the candles before the sunset. That's for sure. So if she lit before the before the uh, sunset, even one minute, two minutes before the sunset, she fulfilled the obligation to to uh, um, uh, to light the candles. But I would say, just say, look, if we're going to allow them to to light uh, two minutes before the uh, the sunset, guess what? Many people are they are so not punctual. They going to like. Uh, uh, they're going to miss it for sure. Many people, right? We, we're trying to to start uh, our class. Baruch Hashem, everybody, everybody got the point on 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 that. I think in the thirty seconds before, one minute before, like. Uh, but we try Bezras Hashem. We try like to start on time, because uh, time is very precious, right? Uh, but uh, but many people they do not understand like fifteen minutes, eighteen minutes. It, it's all all the same. For them, that's why our sages in the great wisdom they say, okay, we're going to make a halacha for everyone. Everyone doesn't matter how big you are, how how punctual you are. Eighteen minutes before the sunset, right? So eighteen minutes before the sunset. So in some set sense, it became normal. So if, and you you want to add to this normal, extra from from yourself, take from uh, from mundane and add to uh, to the holy. Um, continue. If a woman does not light in uh, at, uh, that standard 18 minutes, she should make every effort to light as soon as possible. So, as we said before the sunset, first she will be um, she will be adding more to Shabbos, right? Second, um, one should not risk lighting too close to sunset, since it is difficult to know uh, the exact time of the sunset. Take place. Of course, I mean we, we have a we have a calendar and we know exactly. But and, and unless we have a cell phone with you and then you know exactly what time. Sometimes uh, time in uh, on, a, on a on a kitchen appliances it's not exact. Maybe it's it's a little behind. And maybe uh, like all of these uh, crazy things. So we try to go by time at least 18 minutes, but preferable to add a minute or two. Preferable 10. Okay. Any questions on what we said? We'll continue. So it's very, very important things. Of course, we go uh, like um, I mean, we, we're not going to deep into it because we covered it uh, in a class radiance of Shabbos. We did all of the possible scenarios, all of the possible details. So if somebody did not uh, watch it, so let me know. I can send you the, the link there on on uh, on our channel. Okay, continue. Accepting Shabbos on oneself. The general custom is that a woman completes her mitzvah, uh, completes her mitzvah, that is, she has lit all of the candles and make her bracha. It is how considered the Shabbos for her. The automatic acceptance means that she may not do any melacha, work that is forbidden on Shabbos. Um... However, uh, the other members of the household, uh, that's what I was question. 
are not necessarily bound uh, by her uh, by her acceptance of Shabbos. As long as it is not yet sunset, they are permitted to continue do milacha as long as they haven't uh, included themselves in her acceptance of, of the Shabbos. So, um, so our law is right uh, if she if she uh, lit the candles, and so that's that's considered as she accepted Shabbos. Of course, she she might stipulate like uh, preferably out loud, but uh, but or uh, or like uh, in her mind that I'm going to light the candles, but I'm not going to accept the Shabbos now, right? And of course, it's proper um, um, when we do annulment of the vows. So after the annulment of the vows, so say I'm going to light the candles, uh, like. Like uh, do 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 stipulations. So I'm not going to always accept Shabbos when I light my candles. So so if I decided not to accept Shabbos, that's what it's going to be, right? Why? Well, what's the problem? So once we did something, three things, it's like we made the wow. Like uh, that's it. Okay. But if we say okay, even though I'm going to do three times in a row some things, I'm not accepting so, uh, uh, upon myself as a nether. So that's why we say uh, "bli nether." I'm not. Uh, I'm not obligating myself. Okay. So she, even though she 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 lit the candles, let's say uh, as we advise her, ten minutes before the candle lighting, so twenty eight minutes before the sunset, right? So her kids can do still I don't know laundries or whatever. She she can they they they, they still can do many other things. No problem. Or her husband. When man lights the Shabbos candles, he does not automatically accept Shabbos with the performance of this mitzvah. Still, it would like, if he would like to do milacha, it is best for him to have specific intent not to accept Shabbos uh, uh, with his life. Okay, with the man is uh, is uh, different, right? How is it different? So women, are, as we said uh, in the beginning of the book, women are not obligated to pray marriage service, like evening services, right? But men are obligated. So he's going to accept Shabbos later on when he's going to uh, say uh, specific, specific uh, like psukim, right? After the Chadai Di and stuff like that, right? Um, some say it's uh, two last verses of the Chadai Di when we turn back to, 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 to the entrance door, right? Some say it's um, uh, next uh, Psalm 92. That, that does not make any difference, like it's five, five seconds difference, like doesn't matter but he's going to accept there uh right so if for example wife is late and he's going to light the candles so he's not uh, accepting showers but it's proper of course they say just keep in mind i'm going to light candles but i'm going to go to shul and i'm going to accept shabbos there <clears throat> <clears throat> there is a dispute among the paskin as to when exactly a woman accepts shabbos some authorities contend so that's very interesting, that it is your bracha on the light of the candles. Therefore, although we usually recite bracha before performance of the mitzvah, in this case it is not possible because she will be forbidden to light the candles. Thus, uh, thus she first light the candles and covers her eyes, therefore not to derive any benefit from the candles, and then make the bracha. This is to some degree is considered as she had uh, received the recited the bracha before performing of the mitzvah. Since this one does not derive benefit from the candle, the mitzvah has not been fulfilled. So let's try to understand that because it's very, very important and it's, um, it's one of the, uh, it does not say here, but uh, that's one, one of the difference between the Ashkenazi custom and Sephardi custom. It does not say, but we're going to explain. Okay, so the the question is wh when when the woman actually light uh, fulfill the uh, this mitzvah of la lighting candles, but she, when she leads the candle or when when she say the the, the blessing. So if we say uh, uh, the, the the mitzvah is lighting of the candles, so naturally naturally it should be when uh, when uh, when she lights the candle that she fulfill the mitzvah, right? So it's very interesting. So we say here a little different. So we say uh, here, our paskim say, uh, majority, 
that uh, she accepts Shabbos with a blessing. Right? So she, she said, thank uh, 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 Hashem, blah, 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 uh, uh, that uh, they commanded us to, to light the candles. Okay. So our custom is the first woman, as, as we discussed last time, she would turn off the, the light, let's say, in, the, in the, her, her dining living room, turn off the electric light, all of the lights, then turn them on quietly, no, no talking, uh, lights all of the candles, whatever candles, uh, uh, how many candles she, she lights. Some, as, as you said last time, many, some people light uh, a, a bigger num number of candles. It's your own business. Quietly, right? So she, so she finished. If she needs to extinguish match, she can. Some people crazy say they, they cannot. They're crazy. So if she needs oil, just, just put it down and it's going to go by by itself. Uh, and then uh, she, she does this motion where we her hands, close, okay, right? Close your eyes, uh, right? And then say the blessing and open her eyes and, and derive uh, benefit from the candles. So benefit is seen. So one, once she lit, lit the candles, she must uh, like close your eyes as soon as possible, not to derive any benefit. As we said last time, if, uh, if she would light the candles and do not derive any benefit, the, so this uh, candle lighting was 100% in vain. Blessing, not candle, but blessing was in vain, uh, which is a big problem. So when she uh, closed her eyes, right? It, she did not derive benefit. Now she said the blessing. And in some sense, now she's going to, uh, she opens her eyes and derives benefit. Continue. Other authorities have the opinion that woman accepts Shabbos upon herself with the actual lighting of the candles, not with the bracha. According to this opinion, once she has lit the candles, she is no longer permitted to blow out the match. Exactly, what, as we said here. Instead, she should um, just place a burning match on a safe place, for example, a candle tray, and uh, let uh, it extinguish by itself. I mean, uh, uh, even though it is, it is allowed to... To, to, to extinguish the, the match, even, uh, uh, I'm not talking about first opinion, but uh, the thing is, we, we try not to extinguish fire, like, for whatever reason. So if you have uh, some, like, uh, they say on, on a tray, it, it can leave, um, leave, leave a mark. So some people have some, like, like some, like, like, ashtray or some, like, like, uh, like to, to put there a match or some, some other like a metal container that would not uh, get burned, right? So according to, to the second opinion, so she would say, uh, she would uh, first, and that's what Sephardim do, uh, at least most of them, I'm, I'm not sure about all of them, but uh, most of them, uh, I know there is some exception, I cannot say from the top of my head who, who are doing different, B uh, but they would say the blessing first and, they, uh, and then they uh, light the candles. Okay, so and same same is a mikveh, right? Uh, well, when women uh, go go to the mikveh, so first they would say, as if they would say the blessing and they uh, deep as as we do with all other mitzvahs, right? So so for, first you say blessing on the apple and then then you eat, right? With all other mitzvahs, but uh, Ashkenazim that's not what the, what they do. Ashkenazim, Ashkenazim women they first deep right the, like into the mikveh. Then, uh, to, like when, when this lady, the mikva lady, confirmed that it was good, so the, the, the blessing was good, so she she comes out and say the blessing. Okay, that's uh, two differences. Okay, so let me check the time. One second. Uh, okay, so you know what? I think we can stop here because I saw there are a few questions online. So let's go to these questions. Any. Any questions on what, what we said or any other topic from people? On... Okay, no problem. Uh, yeah, go ahead, please. Go ahead. Yes, so, uh, Rabbi, one of the questions I have is, so women or men as well, right? Um, so we're allowed to, during those 18 minutes time span, I say we light the candle. We're allowed to do uh, melachas, like any anything we have to do during that time. Yeah, no, one second, one second. Step back. So if we, if we, we wanna, like let, let's say it's in our calendars, it's let's say 
uh, I always say check your own calendar. So let's say it's 18 minutes before before the sunset. Uh, you you can the lighting is uh, is at the specific time. So if she would light the candles, so she accepted Shabbos, so she cannot do any melachas. Period. So but man, her husband can okay. or other people. That there is no problem for them. It's All no right. problem. Yeah, yeah, okay. Thank you so much, Rabbi. Appreciate it. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So, and and for men, that there is there is no problem, uh, as uh, as we said before. Why? Because uh, we said uh, if men do, do not uh, usually do not accept Shabbos with the candlelight. Let's say he, his wife is late. I mean, she got stuck in traffic, so he lit the candles for her just in case. And uh, with men, it's easier since he does not accept Shabbos. Let, let's say uh, his wife called him from a traffic and said. I'm going to be late. I'm going to come. Uh, I don't know two, two, two minutes before the sunset. So he can light the candles even 30 minutes before, like uh, 40 minutes. Doesn't matter. Like uh, just in his mind, it should be like uh, he, he would not forget. Of, of course, you cannot on another hand light too early or have a uh, normal candles. So some, some somebody like uh, uh, it, it was few few, few years ago. This person no longer. He's learning with us, but uh, the guy was a little um, cheap, and he did not want to spend money on uh, on a candle. So his wife asked me to talk to him to um, to buy these uh, four hours candles. Like uh, they cost a little more. I don't know, maybe thirty percent or whatever. So I and uh, I, I I talked to the guy about the mitzvah. He that what's not happened. So I said, you know what? I have a sponsor for you. I have a sponsor for you, like. Uh, you you pay for two 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 pack of candles and somebody is going to pay for the third. So he was very happy. He agreed and uh, we bought a pack of candles so to, to make the wife happy. You understand? It's four hours. Somebody buy five hours. So that's that's very important thing. So you have to uh, like um, uh, use these candles for for your meal, right? So if you uh, like uh, light shorter candles and uh, you you go into start your meal very late. So the, these candles are also useless. Okay, go ahead. So Shabbat for men, like for we accept Shabbat when Shabbat comes, correct? Like let's say I don't know, I'm gonna put a time to say uh, five fifty one. That's when our Shabbat starts, and then for women it starts when they light the candles, correct? It's it time? could be no no one, one, one second one second, one second. It, it could be like uh, as as I said. Uh, men accept you during the prayer. So can, can you pro pro prolong, like uh, uh, start the prayer a little later? Yeah. Sometimes a rabbi likes the, to speak, he gives the speech. Okay, so it's going to be like 10 minutes later or is it, people like, like to learn before Shabbos. Like uh, some, some like some Kabbalistic stuff, let's say. Again, there is, there is no problem. I mean, if uh, everybody in the community agreed that's their custom, so, or, or they sing these songs uh, like uh, before um, this Kabbalah Shabbos, like accept on the Shabbos, these beautiful songs. Uh, it, it's still, it's ju ju just because they started this song, it's not, uh, it's not Shabbos yet. So if you go to the Western Wall in Yerushalayim, they would sing like 40 minutes this song. They're still not accepting Shabbos. You understand? So with men, it's when, when during the prayer. But since he's not doing any melacha, there is no problem. So I, I want to, I want you un, understand. So, but but with women, she she must do it like on time. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, go ahead, please. Ah, uh, can can somebody please read for me? I cannot see. It's very far. Please. Yes, Joshua. Please. Yeah, go ahead, Joshua. Please read. Um, okay, sorry. Um, on what needs to happen to someone's nefesh when they donate blood? Or it's drawn and put in a pile to do blood test. Oh, okay, okay. That, that, that's uh, that's from previous question. I remember I saw it. Right. So so it's very interesting question. Right. It's it's very very interesting question. So we, we said that the part of our soul 
is um, is is in the blood. So nephesh is, is in the blood, and it has um, this part of the soul has a minimum amount of blood that uh, that it, it has to stick to. Right, if it's less than this amount of blood, has for shown. So when it uh, person loses too too much blood, the person dies. That's it, right? So the nephesh is there. <laughs> so since it is a it is a spiritual, so it's going to stay there. So is is it good to donate blood? Yeah, that's uh, that's uh, that's what people. If if you look at the Talmud, that's what people that was doing constantly uh, for 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 the high blood pressure from this from that. So they. Uh, uh, I would say just say it's it's good for blood to be like um, renewed from from time to time, right? And some some people today they don't want to 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 to, uh, to donate blood for whatever whatever reason. So and uh, they have too much blood in their system, so they would uh, use this uh, um, the the blood thinner. And I don't know some some like uh, generic stuff like. Over the counter stuff that they would take uh, like pills and uh, to, to make the blood thinner. But if you if you if you donate the blood, you would uh, do the same. So the, there is no no pl no no problem is if it's a safe you know they they using like all of the like safe facility they're not going to introduce like some needle from uh, from uh, HIV person yeah there is no problem. So no nephesh stays the same uh, in inside of the uh, in the body, no problem. Okay. Go ahead. Could you could you read uh, second question, please? Um, can we ask? Can we ask to our husbands after the candles are lit if one of the candles is not straight? In the chandelier, and we're still on time, but the wife already accepted the Shabbat over mm -hmm. her. That her husband put straight the candle so the oil or the candle wax will fall. Okay, that's uh, that, that's a very good question. Yeah, so before the Shabbat started, there, there, is, there is no problem. Before the sunset, there is no problem. After the sunset, um. It's a good uh, good question. I don't want to answer it right away. So candles become muktze. Uh, muktze is uh, it's this is Hashem. We are going to have a separate class on the muktze. So some things that are set uh, set away things that we we are not going to use on Shabbos. So since sunset, so it's questionable if he is allowed to uh, to fix the candles. But but usually if if husband goes to the synagogue, he's not there. That's that's uh, that's uh, very pl practical, I, I would say, uh, answer, because he, he already went to show. Okay. But before the sunset, there is no problem. Also. Okay. What else? Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Please. Please forgive me for my ignorance, but who is Yannick? Yeah, yeah, who Rav Shlomo Yehuda, and he be Moshe reincarnated? Oh, oh, oh! This um, okay. I I heard of the, the this person. I mean, uh, some some people say Christians mostly that he's a Mashiach. Okay, that's uh, let's let's keep the the subject. I mean, if he would be Mashiach, and nobody would have any. Any problem? So our uh, our sages explain that uh, Eliyahu Hanovi comes before and announce Mashiach. So we need this we don't need this Christian uh, idol worshippers to tell us who is uh, who is a holy, who is not holy. I mean, uh, right, it's not for them to to decide. And uh, since Eliyahu did not announce, so most likely he's not Mashiach. Okay. So, but uh, he he's, uh, he could be very very holy person. Does one does not contradict another? Okay. So what, what else? I think it was one more question. No. Yeah, go ahead. What is it, Josh? Are you allowed to write notes along the sides? 
of the pages in our Sidur? Yes, yeah, yeah, yes, 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 yeah. So, yeah, the, there is no problem even uh, in, in the Chumash, like when, when you learn in any any holy book, if you, if, if you like, uh, you, you notes, you, your summary, like uh, your, your personal example, like uh, how, how you want to remember this concept, there is no problem whatsoever. It, it's, it's not considered to dis disrespect to the, I mean, you, you, you write in the, the words of the Torah or for, for example, some people like uh, the, the name of the sick people. I mean, uh, to, to write in the Siddur, I would not advise because uh, like, uh, uh, in 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 a sense, that you you're saying that, that these people should be has for shalom sick permanently. So, uh, like I would say, them on a, on a piece of paper somewhere and put uh, this paper into my cedar. Like I mean, I I remember all of the sick sick people, and not of me, but everybody. Remember, I, I my gabai from my shul. He, like when 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 we say like uh, uh, sick people, he probably mentioned like he speaks very fast. Maybe 30, 40, 50 people. I don't know how many. A lot. Baruch Hashem, he's a very holy man. Right. Uh, but but otherwise, uh, if, if you need to, 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 to make yourself notes, uh, to say this, not to say that, or like to, to, to stress like uh, like on, on this syllable, not on that syllable, there is no problem. You, you can write and see that. Okay. Any other questions? I think... Okay, go um, why is it forbidden to drink water after we say the bedtime shalom? Oh, 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 like um, when it's uh, when um, Ben Ben Hashem So it's uh, I, I think I think that the the question, if I, if if I understand the question correctly, it's. Uh, after after the, the Shabbos is over, so it's not over. It's not over. Well, when did we say it? Uh, I, I don't remember in which class we have just recently said. So the, the Shabbos is over. Maybe even today we said like after the nightfall. Nightfall, the Shabbos is over. So this uh, and this questionable time is Ben uh, Hashem So when uh, after the, the the sunset and until the nightfall, it's questionable time. Maybe it's day. Maybe it's night. Some things we do, some things we don't do because it's questionable. Okay, so if it's for the purpose of the mitzvah, yeah, you can do it until the almost until the nightfall. So example would be uh, <clears throat> if you need uh, to eat the, the third meal of Shabbos, right? So you can do like later on, like even forty minutes. Again, depends on, on in, the, in the region where you live. But I live, so I can even go so uh, like 40, 15, 17, two minutes. Almost up to 72 minutes after the sunset, I can start the meal because it's for a mitzvah. But some things are not for the mitzvah, and it says that um, uh, some people kept Shabbos, and they, they were not uh, such a like perfect uh, perfect personality in other areas. So they these people go to gain home. Right, but uh, what is the difference between them and other Jews? So they would let out on Shabbos. So they, since they were enjoying time on Shabbos in this world, right? So I mean, they're they not enjoying. They were keeping Shabbos in this world. So measure for measure, they would be allowed to keep Shabbos in a, in a, in a gay in a, in, a, in a hell, right? Measure for measure, right? And uh, and after. And after the Ben Hashem Ashos, and after, no, not after, after, after the sunset, they would be let, uh, uh, led back to their places in the, in the game home, right? Because, uh, I mean, you enjoy, but you have to uh, pay your duties, whatever. And they would uh, give them water to drink, because game home is very hot, as we learned from a movie. Game home is, is very hot. So, and, uh, and when person here, like in, in this world, so he would drink the water, he, it would be taken from, I think, uh, parents for sure, maybe somebody similar, I'm not, I'm not sure, like who, who else, uh, it, it would be taken from their water. So the, it's it's the water that, that uh, like, uh, the fire is not going to affect them so fast. Like, uh, maybe they were going to, like, uh, not to be affected for a split second, two seconds, I don't know, whatever this water. So they, they treasure this water very much. So with us drinking the water after the sunset, 
it's taken from their war and these dead people they can uh, some uh, take uh, revenge on, uh, on the living so basically don't I mean is, is it halacha it's not halacha but we try not to not to take uh, whatever from uh, from from the de deceased that's uh, that's the explanation okay any other questions two more okay two more wow okay okay go ahead if men are forbidden to shave with razors is it still okay for women to shave their legs with razors Okay, that's uh, that's very very good uh, question. So I would answer from 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 the last question because it's easier. It's actually allowed for men also to to use a razor on the neck. There is no problem. So the the problem is uh, the Torah says do not shave your face, and it says uh, um, five uh, five spots. So if you look at the books in uh, in Humash, Vizrash, they they give the different spots here 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 like. I mean the, the different spots, like whatever. So, so that's why I always say you say so to be on the safe side, don't shave, but you you can trim. And what what does it mean trim? So when when you when uh, when this uh, shaving machine or like trimmer would uh, would work as as a scissors like like this like this like this. So and uh, so a, a person can take an electric shaver. Like uh, with, with razor, never allowed. For women, yes, but for men, no. Right? Uh, they they would take uh, some some if somebody wants to to shave that, there is no problem. Take electric shaver, but make sure very critical. It's not lift and cut technology. So to, the the best shaver, the best how do you know by price, right? So the best shaver, the cleanest shaver would be lift and cut technology. So and it it's like lift, so like uh, with uh, like uh, with a tweezer or something, right? And then cut very close, almost like a like a shaver. So it that's why it's it's not allowed. Uh, there is a list on the kosher. I think that there is a still. A, uh, web website. I mean, uh, that's why I, 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 I've been uh, using for other people that uh, right who, who wants to shave. Uh, it's a sh koshershaver.com, koshershaver.com, and every year that, that uh, they uh, they post the new newer models from different manufacturers and to say uh, which uh, which um, uh, shavers are kosher. But if 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 somebody wants to buy this. Uh, lift and cut technology. There, there is a way. Like if you handy, so there is a way to to remove this clip, right? I mean, it, it's like you need, you need uh, like screwdrivers. It's it's not a big deal. I mean, if you want to, it's they 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 give you videos. Uh, like uh, I think online on I think in even this website on YouTube. But uh, uh, if if somebody already bought and spends a, a lot of money and wants to keep his shaver, yeah, there is no problem. You can fix this uh, shaver. So for, for men, it's uh, never allowed. Uh, or only on a, on a, what is it on a, um, on a neck. For women, on a neck, women can can uh, you shave uh, like for other parts of the body, but men cannot. Men problem is the men uh, they cannot uh, do the things that women do. Right, so for example, women would shave their legs. Men are not, not allowed to shave their legs. That's uh, by way of the women and other things. So women can shave uh, un, un, under the, the armpits. Men are not allowed to shave. You can trim, but uh, like the scissors or with these uh, other things, but not not to shave. Okay, what else, please? Go ahead. No, I guess like a no, 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 no. It's it's too thick. So as uh, as we said, if it's not flowing, if it's not flowing, fl flowing like flowing, it's a baby oil. So baby oil, I, I mean, like oil, is some thicker oil, like olive oil. There is no problem, but uh, coconut oil, it's it's. Uh, I mean, it, uh, the, the, the way I, uh, the, the way I. I imagine it may, maybe the, the, the different consistency, but uh, they are very thick. So and, and it could be even biblical. So biblical, how how do you know which is biblical or not biblical? So in uh, biblical, they, they use uh, 
uh, animal's fat. So what is animal fat? Like uh, if you if you saw the for the, the fat that the people would not eat, but you can do you use candles. You you use for production other things like to for, to to smooth out things. Okay. So it, meaning what that you you put your finger in in there, you take your finger out, and this hole is going to to stay there for a very long time, maybe forever. You understand? So all of these uh, creams are forbidden. Th those type of creams forbidden by uh, by biblical decree. So if it's a little uh, like more more flowy, but still uh, it's going to take time for the hole to to uh, to come to like to to close. I would say those are uh, rabbinically forbidden. So what, what is no problem is flowing like a, like a oil. So that that's why no no lipstick, no chapstick, uh, no. No other things so like uh, not, not allowed on Shabbos. So it's it's not all coloring like chapsticks. You usually no uh, no color, but it's smoothing. That's that's the issue. So you you smooth your lips and you smooth the the um, the chapstick itself. Two things. Okay. What else? I know we talked about this before. Go ahead. But did you say, I know we said that tasting food for Shabbos is a mitzvah. Yeah. It's good for us to taste the food. But do we have to say a braha on everything that we taste? Or does it have to be a certain amount of it? Okay, that's a good question. So uh, the, 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 the practical answer, the, the, uh, the practical reason uh, to, 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 to taste the food is uh, it's to understand the food is ready or not. Maybe you need uh, to add some uh, uh, some uh, was it some herbs, some salt, some pepper, some uh, I don't know, some seasoning, whatever you, you need to eat. Maybe it's it's undercooked, right? Since uh, on Shabbos we're not allowed to cook, and you're not allowed to to use uh, herbs uh, because some of them are raw, so we're not allowed to cook on Shabbos. You understand? So I'm I'm not going to like deep into it, but uh, like some some basic ideas. So, but that's one of the practical reasons when, when you taste everything before Shabbos and you can split. Your wife uh, tastes soup, you, you, take, you taste fish, whatever, so, right? So, so just, just make sure that uh, everything has all of the ingredients, nothing is missing or like uh, nothing is overdone, like, uh, I don't know, like uh, too, too much salt in the soup. Okay, when uh, it happens, too much salt in the soup. So since it's before Shabbos, so you can eat potatoes, rice, whatever you add to soup, you can still save the soup. Uh, it's first uh, part of the uh, answer. But second part of the answer, uh, if you're, uh, you're, you're obligated to say the blessing. So I would say it depends. So if you're going to spit out, so for uh, for example, a woman want, wants to taste soup like uh, only with uh, the tip of her tongue, so she's not like, there is no substance. Right, so there is no blessing, or she would would spit out. It's not it's not ready, right? So she's cooking meat. It's not ready. She she's not going to swallow. Okay, there is no blessing. But if uh, if you're going to derive your palate is going to derive pleasure, so it doesn't matter like a few, like few like uh, drops or even one drop or one crumb. So you will be said the blessing. We we don't say after blessing. It could be one blessing for all of the foods if they cover with one blessing. But uh, yeah. For sure, you say blessing if you're going to swallow. Okay. What else? So even uh, I, I just I just want to note something for for just so even some things uh, we said uh, before. So if you if it's still not clear to you or you don't remember the, the answer, please don't don't be shy as as this question uh, because uh, my goal for you to to remember all of the things to, to understand the logistic why why we answered like that maybe I I, I was did, like explaining other things and I just said like uh, in a by the way matter so don't don't be shy if we discuss no problem I think other people are going to benefit uh, from this as well okay any other questions Okay, so if not, uh, right, Baruch Hashem, thank you for joining us today. Um, good night until tomorrow. Thank you.